It's one day to Democracy Day, and so many things are already planned to mark June 12. The federal government will be airing a documentary and has declared Monday a public holiday. But thousands of Nigerians say they hold, or they will rather hold, a mass protest against bad government. We'll talk about these and more. Oshun State Government gets more security conscious with a plan to profile immigrants and especially herders. We'll talk about the plan to issue identity cards to them. And we'll also say a thing or two about the interview President Muhammad Buhari granted a television station uh, two days ago. Good morning to you and thank you very much for being with us all through the week and of course joining us this Friday morning here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogbon. Good morning, Anita. Good morning. I am Anita Felix. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast this very bright and beautiful Friday. It's the wrap to the weekend and we're really excited, looking forward to that. Especially the big day tomorrow, the 12th of June, 2021. Yes, uh, officially is June 12th, um, um, World Democracy Day. I remember in 2018. Uh, it was changed uh, from May 29 to June 12. Uh, you know, it still came with a little bit of controversy. You know, there's uh, the different uh, people who had, well, different views, basically. Uh, those who said, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really change much, you know, if you're not really respecting and leaving, you know, a total democracy and giving people the freedom and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you know, the, you know, some people from the Southwest, of course, were happy about it because of the respect and the honor that it gave to MKO Abiola. Um, who was, of course, uh, you know, uh, made uh, GCON, um, and, uh, uh, well, former president, basically. Um, so, so yeah, it's also going to be interesting to see how it plays out tomorrow. There's, you know, like we said, uh, going to be a documentary by the federal government, and at the same time, there's people who have uh, stated that they will, you know, protest. You know, the, what Nigeria currently is, you know, seen as its democracy. So, mixed uh, feelings, mixed reactions. We'll see how it goes. Yes, can we really talk? more in detail about the June 12 um, events, the protests that are being planned, the celebrations that are being planned as well. It's just a lot for me. When you look at the person of MQ Abiola, um, apparently, I, was I even born then? Like, I have to think about in that. Was, that. Was I born in 93? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't exactly <laughs> think so. But the point is, his, his legacy outlives him, whether he was president or not. You know. I remember doing stories about MQ Abiola many years ago, and you needed to see the way people spoke about him. People told me, if, if it wasn't for MQ Abiola, I would be an illiterate. He sent me abroad, he sent me to school, or oh, through his Abiola football club. You know, I, people just had great stories. He was a Muslim, but he built churches. He built mosques across the country, he built schools. You know, he was just the epitome of a leader, president or no president. You know. MK Obiola, like many have des des described him, he was a bridge builder. He, he, he didn't care wherever you were from, and people didn't care where he was from. People didn't look at him and say, you're a Muslim, you're a Yoruba man. He was one Nigerian that unified and united lots of people. When you look back at the day, June 12, 1993, it, it's June, it was raining that period. People didn't care. They came out to vote under the rain. Yeah. You needed to see the queues. People were willing to stand behind MKO Abiola. And he won overwhelmingly, yeah. became the presumed winner of the election until IBB announced that. So there's just a lot really to talk about the day, the significance. And, you know, while we talk about celebrating June 12, for me, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, if, if I'm to be completely honest, use the word celebrate. Because really, what would I as a person celebrate? An event that was declared by national and international observers to be the freest and fairest election in Nigeria's history that day that election was annulled by a military um, head of state. So I don't think there's anything to celebrate about that. Rather, as a person, in my opinion, I'd rather honor that day for all it represented, you know, and all it represents. So really looking forward to that in um, long discussion with um, Oh, well. An analyst um, later on. on the I think the celebration is mostly about Democracy Day. Um, um, you know, June 12 apparently, of course, has been named Democracy Day. So they, you know, are one you know, and the same currently. Um, but the, the, what Nigeria is celebrating or should be celebrating. Did democracy is, really you know, thrive on June 12? 
that's that, um, these so, are the so, questions we need to yes, ask. Yes, really. you know, absolutely. You know, but the thing is, you know, if we didn't do it, if we're not doing it tomorrow, we would have done it on the 29th of May. So the the you know celebration is about democracy. Uh, June 12, yes, has its own uh, conversations built around it, and you know the events that took place, you know, on, on this day in 1993 and all of that. But um, you know, will Nigerians really be celebrating democracy? And that's that's where you know there would be some confusion. There's some people who have said absolutely not because we don't seem to be fully experiencing a democracy. You know, but we'll, we'll talk about it. We have a guest coming up uh, sometime later on the show mm -hmm. to share thoughts on that one. Uh, there's something big that happened in the last uh, a couple of hours, and that was an interview by President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, that, of course, has also created loads of conversations across Nigeria. Um, um, first of all, from critics saying, "Oh, you know, it wasn't a live interview." You know, to those who said, who listened and watched the interview rather, and had their own thoughts um, concerning that interview. Mm -hmm. um, the first point that I would make with regards it is, you know, a, a lot of times. So, you know, many times. First of all. Um, I've always said that, uh, you know, it, it's not normal that we have a government that doesn't see the need in the wake of all the things that are problems and problematic and disturbing Nigerians from the economy to security to education, infrastructure, um, all of that, kidnappings and, and some of all of that. It's, it's, uh, it's not normal that we don't have a government that feels the need to always speak to the Nigerian people to reassure them that they understand and they are, you know, you know, fully in control of the situation. Um, it is not normal that we have um, a government, you know, in, in power today that doesn't think it's necessary to, you know, address the press, you know, every week, every month, every now and then. Um, Donald Trump, as much as he was criticized because of the things that he said, and, you know, people said he was always telling lies. Um, they understood the need for the president to speak with he the American people. He was never far from the people. Yeah. So um, it's not normal, you know, that we can hear in the news that 50 people, you know, were killed or 88 people or, you know, 60 or 30. And we get silence. And, you know, and there's a couple of tweets silence, from presidential know. aides. Exactly. Um, and the president himself doesn't feel the need. The presidency, you know, don't feel the need, you know, for the president to speak with Nigerian people. The person who was elected, who people, you know, stood under the sun. Um, and elected and put into power twice, doesn't feel the need to speak with the Nigerian people and tell them and reassure them that, you know, we, are, we are, have, it, you know, the country under, um, you know, control. So there is that part, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've gone, you know, almost six years without, you know, any of these press conferences, maybe once, um, you know, um, prior to the elections and all of that. So it finally did happen yesterday because, of course, it was in Lagos to launch um, uh, some uh, projects. Um, but, of course, it still came with its own levels of criticism with regards to the things that he said. The, the, the general idea behind, you know, presidential media chat or speaking with the press or with the public is to, uh, two things, you know, which I think are very important is, first of all, to reassure the people, um, the electorate, that the person, uh, the person who holds the seat of, um, you know, commander-in-chief, the president of the nation, has 100% or at least 90% understanding of the challenges that the country is facing. Understands in every single detail, can be asked any question in any direction and has an idea, has heard about it, um, you know, knows what is currently, you know, being done about it, anything whatsoever. At least has been briefed. I remember, yeah, at least has been briefed. I remember um, um, Obasanjo's time, you know, it, those things used to be regular. And you could ask him any question, you know, in any direction. And he would obviously have some always to, to say. Could be criticized later, but at least he understood it. So that's the first, you know, reason. The second is, um, aside showing the people that you understand, it's also to reassure that aside understanding, these are the things that you are doing mm -hmm. to ensure that you lift them out of the suffering or lift them out of their challenges. And you um, just basically reassure the Nigerian people that you are in charge. So that's um, where, you know, a lot of people found, um, you know, the interview lacking, yes, uh, you know, yesterday. Um, after it was aired, a lot of people were, you know, didn't get that feeling from that interview that, oh, you know, the, the president understands 100% of what's going on in Nigeria today in every single space, security and, you know, infrastructure, and, you know, Herder's, you know, crisis and the kidnappings and the cause of secession and all of that. Um, 
full understanding and full you know um you know um ideas on what must be done to ensure that we move in a better direction. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know, some of the things that were lacking yesterday. The question concerning Niger Republic and you know, projects of Niger Republic came with an answer that, of course, was say, you know, he said, oh, we have cousins you know, in Niger and some of all of that. And it might sound, you know, you know, on a lighter note, people might, you know, laugh and say, oh, well, you know, and yeah, people can also argue that, okay, yes, true. You know, we have brothers in Ghana also, we have brothers in Cote d'Ivoire and some of all of that, which is fine. But in, in the interim, at the time that we are, that's, from what I'm seeing, the comments that I've seen on social media, um, that's not the response that a lot of people wanted. That's not the response a lot of people expected to hear um, to defend our relationship with Niger and to defend the finances that we're putting into, you know, Niger Republic for any reason. Same thing with the Twitter uh, conversation. The president simply said, well, you know, he doesn't have a response to that or, you know, he will keep that to himself. Same thing with his conversation concerning, you know, security. Um, there wasn't a lot, you know, that showed from his response that showed that there was full understanding of what was, you know, being done or what the situation was. Yes. And the one that, of course, was really, really shocking for a lot of people was the question on foreign direct investment, uh, where, of course, he, you know, started referring to the NSAR's protesters and saying that they uh, tried to, you know, remove him from power and some of all of that, which was shocking, you know, shocking because of... Um, what you know a lot of people know really about the NSAS protests and how that suddenly has turned into a trying to cool. take me out of power and at the same time um why or how that has become the reason we don't have foreign direct investment um and uh, all of that and said it's also probably mentioned that nigerians need to you know behave better the youth need to be better behaved and they will get jobs be let see i listened to that video it was a it was a, an interview of over 30 minutes and for a conversation that should have been by the president to the media or media asking questions to the president, I didn't get lots of takeaways that I will hold dear to my heart and say, my president said this to me. My president assured me about this. My president made me feel that despite whatever is happening, there's still some level of control that he has over the country. You know, just listening to questions. First of all, there was lots of laughter exchanged in the room and when you look at the light of you know the security situation in the country you would have expected a more sober mood to say okay this is what's happening and this is what we feel about it but lots of laughter you wonder was that a comedy session going on there because i didn't really see any urgency regarding his response to the questions that were asked of him most of them were dodgy most of them were not direct they were not straight answers i got you didn't really get any substance out of his response to the Twitter ban or the Twitter suspension when he was asked about certain questions and I think one, one, one of the answers he gave was do you want me to contradict my, my attorney general mm. questions or answers like that so you asked him about the um, the ban on open graze and he asked him about the farmers headers clash and he says oh the southern governors should go and sort it out among themselves he said autumn is just being biased and unfair to him it it just it, it didn't sound right to me maybe we might have been missing something i don't know maybe we need to listen to that conversation again and again and again to get the the meat of that of that of that conversation but i didn't really get anything out of it no key takeaway from me yeah, well you know like i said um, it lacked, you know, those two very important things, and that is on the understanding and the ability to reassure Nigerians that um, the government was in charge of the situation and was going to do everything uh, possible. And to convey empathy um, to Nigerians. Yeah, you know, empathy, and, that, and that's what we've, we've also lacked for a very, very long time. Um, you know, like you said, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like a sober uh, conversation considering the things that are currently going on in Nigeria. Um, it didn't seem like the government really is bothered about those 50 lives. And, uh, and their families. It didn't seem like, the, you know, they were reassured that there would be justice. Um, you know, he also spoke concerning the um, IPOB and, you know, said that, you know, he, um, so he had had a conversation with governors and uh, they were going to be um, either locked in or I can't remember what it was, you know, and it, it, it kind of seemed, um, you know, like the president felt like every, you know, Southeasterner is IPOB and, and you know, it, 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 it just wasn't... Um, it just wasn't presidential, first of all. It just didn't seem to convey empathy and understanding of what Nigeria currently is dealing with. 
Um, how are we still talking about grazing roots when we should have moved to a place where we then have, have agreed across the country that um, open grazing should be put to rest. You said they can't contradict um, his attorney general. So um, should, exactly. What more can we expect? So, so, so these are some of the things that were just completely, you know, um, um, off key or off point. Um, I hope, you know, that um, maybe on Monday or you know further, while we talk about, um, um, you know, June twelfth, you know, on the public holiday, we may also be able to extract some of, you know, his responses to, you know, to the um, questions that were asked yesterday. Um, but well, for many Nigerians who've been asking the president to speak, he he spoke. Uh, yeah, and every time can, that he does, can you say, always, they, always can you say they're satisfied? Yeah, no, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, let's go to the papers this morning. It's a Friday morning. So, of course, G.D. Johnson will be joining us to share his thoughts on some of the big stories making headlines across Nigeria today.